The listen functionality is the ability for the function to lead from a certain path based on the input that your user provides to your assistant. To get started with using the listen functionality, let's open the content tab, go to functions and then create a function. Now the listen functionality consists of two parts. First, a choice trace and second, a next many command. Let's discuss the choice trace first. When you interact with a function step through an officially supported Voiceful UI client, the function step, if it sends back a choice trace, will have that choice trace rendered as buttons on the UI client. To define our first choice trace, let's modify the existing trace here. So we'll set the type to choice. For the payload, we'll want to define an array of buttons. Each button has a name. For the first button, I'll call it button A, and for the request object, I'll call this uh, event A. Now, the request object is an object which is sent to the voiceful runtime when you click the button. So if I click button A, we'll send an event of type event A. Next, we'll define a second button called button B. And the request object here is event B. This defines our first choice trace. So let's test this out. We'll go back to the canvas. We'll drag a function into the canvas and then select the function that we just defined. If we run this, you should see that we actually render two buttons, button A and button B that we defined earlier. Clicking button A will automatically send the event called event A back to the voiceful runtime. Now this by itself isn't that useful. We've sent the payload back, but nothing is really processing it. For this, we'll need to add the next many command in order to do something useful. In the next many command, we'll, to define one, we'll have to define a next property. In the next object, we'll want to set the listen flag to true. Now we'll want to define an array of conditional transfers under the to property. A conditional transfer consists of two parts. First, an on property, which specifies when we'll take a certain path. And second, a des property, which specifies the path that we should take. Now at this time, let's define three paths. Path A, path B, and path C. For our first conditional transfer, we want it so that if the incoming request object has type event A, we want to follow down path A. So let's give an overview of what we're doing here. We are rendering a button called button A. When you click button A, it will send a request object of type event A. When the voiceful runtime receives this event, it will check against the to array that we defined here. In this case, when we receive an event of type event A, we'll follow down path A. So essentially, clicking button A will cause us to leave the function step from its path A. Let's finish the rest of this implementation. For our second conditional transfer, if the event.type is event B, we want to leave from path B. And this defines our to array. Now, there's a third property we want to define for the next many command, which is default to. In case that the user sends us a request object that doesn't match any of the conditional transfers listed in the to array, we'll still want the functions that to leave from a certain path. And that's what the default to is for. Here, we'll specify our remaining path, path C. So if the user didn't press button A, didn't press button B, and say they typed something into the chat window and sent it to us, we'll instead follow the default to path, which is path C. With the implementation complete, let's try this out. We'll go back to the designer. Now, I'm going to create three text steps. The text will be outcome A for the first one, and outcome B, and outcome C for the rest. We'll link these up to the ports, and then we'll run our new project. As you can see, we've hit the function step, and we're displaying two buttons, button A and button B. Now let's click button A. This causes the function to leave from path A, and we hit outcome A, and it's printed here. If we click button B, you can see we go down this path and then we print this text step, which gives us outcome B. Now, in the case that the user doesn't click one of the buttons and instead types in some text, 
we instead trigger the default to property. So you can see we're leaving through path C, which links to outcome C. And there you go. This is your first listen functionality with a function step. We hope you can build interesting things with this new functionality.